Hello, Shaver Tigers. Miss Reed again. Um, man, I wish I could see you in person. I love making videos for you because I know you watch them and that makes me really happy. But I never get to see you and I miss you all so much. So one of the things I was thinking about with May being the month of communication is I was thinking about the fact that we have kids in our building who speak so many different languages. And that's definitely something to study when you're studying communication, right? Different ways of talking, different languages, things you understand and things you don't, and how you communicate with someone who doesn't speak your language. And I went online because I really, really wanted to buy some books, and I found a beautiful book and it's in Spanish and in English, and there are some Guatemalan words in the book because the story is about a girl from Guatemala. And I know we have families that shave her from Guatemala. So I was very excited about it. The name of the book is called Rainbow Weaver, Tejedora del Arcoiris, and it is book about a girl who not only speaks a couple of languages but also she uses some very interesting ideas about how to solve the problem that she has and she's creative and she's determined and she has limited resources there's something in this story that she wants to do and she can't because her family can't afford for her to do it. So she figures out a way around it. It reminded me of a lot of things about our lives. There's things we want to do. We might not have the money or the space or the time or the materials to do it. And sometimes we just have to figure out a way around that. So we're gonna listen to the story and see what happens with La Tejedora. She's a weaver. She's a kid, but she's a weaver. That's pretty cool. So let's find out what it has to say. Rainbow Weaver, Tejedora del Arcoiris, by Linda Elovitz Marshall and Elisa Chavarre. High in the mountains above Lake Atilan, Ishel watched her mother weave thread into fabric as beautiful as a rainbow. The fabric had blues as clear as the sky, reds as bright as the flowers, and yellows as golden as the corn. Mama, Ishel asked, may I weave too? Her mother shook her head. Not now, Ishel, she answered. This cloth is for the market. If it brings a good price, it will help us pay for your school and books. En lo alto de las montañas, sobre el lago Ajilán, Ishel observaba a su madre tejer el hilo y convertirlo en una tela tan hermosa como su arcoiris. La tela tenía azules tan claros como el cielo, rojos tan brillantes como las flores, y amarillos tan dorados como el maíz. ¡Mamá! Le preguntó Ishel, ¿me dejas tejer? Su mamá negó con la cabeza. Ahora no, Ishel, le respondió. Esta tela es para el mercado. Si puedo venderla a buen precio, nos ayudará a pagar tu escuela y tus libros. In and out, in and out. Ishel's mother and neighbors wove on basket strap looms. They wove as their mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers had done before them, as Mayan women had done for more than 2,000 years. After a while, Ishel asked, Mama, may I, may I weave now? Again, her mother shook her head. Count threads with me, love. I'll show you how we make designs. Ishel and her mother counted together, un, kai, okshi, kahai. With each additional color, the cloth grew longer and the design prettier. Ishel reached for some thread. Please, she asked. No, my love, answered her mother. You are still too young and there is no extra thread. Entra el hilo y sale el hilo, 
Entra el hilo y sale el hilo. La madre de Ishel y sus vecinas tejían en telares de cintura. Tejían como sus madres, abuelas, bisabuelas y como las mujeres mayas lo han hecho por más de dos mil años. Después de un rato, Ishel preguntó, Mamá, ¿puedo tejer ahora? Su madre volvió a negar con la cabeza. Cuenta los, hilo, los hilos conmigo, mi amor. Te mostraré cómo hacer diseños. Y Shelly y su madre contarán juntas. Jun, Kai, Okshi, Kahi. Con cada color adicional, la tela se alargaba y el diseño era más bonito. Y Shell trató de agarrar el hilo. Por favor, le pidió su mamá. No, mi amor, le respondió su madre. Todavía eres muy pequeña y no tenemos más hilo. Y Shell crossed her arms and studied the hard packed dirt of the yard. I want to weave. I want to help pay for my books and school too, she thought, but she didn't say anything. Instead, she walked toward the milpa, the field where the villagers planted corn, beans, and squash. Plastic bags littered the path. Day after day, more bags were tossed from windows of passing vehicles or discarded by people returning from market. No one could use all the bags and there was nowhere to put them. Ishel se cruzó de brazos y estudió la tierra apisonada del patio. Quiero tejer. Quiero ayudar a pagar mis libros y mi escuela, pensó. Pero no dijo nada y se dirigió a la milpa, el terreno donde la gente del pueblo plantaba maíz, frijoles y calabazas. Había bolsas plásticas por donde quiera. Día tras día y cada vez más, las personas lanzaban bolsas desde las ventanillas de los vehículos o cuando regresaban de pie del mercado. Nadie podía utilizar todas las bolsas si no había lugar donde ponerlas. Pushing the bags aside, Ishel gathered branches and sticks. Some of the sticks were long and some were short. She carried the sticks and the branches home and she tied them together. What are you doing, a neighbor asked. Making a loom, Ishel answered. Her mother smiled, but Ishel, she said, we don't have any extra thread. I know, Mama, she answered. I won't take any. Ishel apartó las bolsas y empezó a recoger ramas y palitos. Algunos eran largos y otros eran cortos. Los llevó a la casa y los ató. ¿Qué haces? le preguntó una vecina. Hago un telar, respondió Ishel. Su madre sonri sonrió. Pero Ishel, dijo, no tenemos más hilo. O lo sé, mamá. Le respondió Ishel, no voy a usar hilo. Ishel tied one end of her loom to a tree and then she gathered tall blades of pajón grass. Sitting on the ground, Ishel joined the blades of grass together by knotting the end of one blade to the end of another until she made a long chain. Then she pushed the batten over and under and back and forth, turning the blades of grass into fabric. When the fabric was finished, it was too small to be a doormat or even a placemat. It was too scratchy to wear as a bracelet. Worst of all, it was a dull greenish white. The fabric was far too small, too scratchy, too dull for anyone to buy. Ishel knew it would never sell. Ishel ató un extremo del telar a un árbol y cortó unas hojas de hierba de pajón. Sentada en su suelo, Ishel unió las hojas de hierba anudando un extremo al otro hasta formar una larga cadena. 
Entonces el pas le pasó la espadilla por arriba y por abajo, por delante y por detrás, y la hierba se convirtió en la tela. Cuando la tela estuvo terminada, era demasiado pequeña para ser una alfombrilla o un mantelito individual. Era demasiado áspera para usar como pulsera. Y lo peor, era de un <coughs> opaco color blanco verdoso. La tela era demasiado pequeña, áspera y opaca. Y Shell sabía que nunca la vendería. Disappointed, Shell took another walk. Climbing the path villagers took to bring sheep up the mountain, she saw a clump of black wool hanging from a branch. Ishel tucked it under her belt. She noticed more clumps of black and white wool dotting the grasses, sticks, and plants. Ishel gathered this wool and tucked it under her belt, too. Decepcionada, Ishel salió de nuevo a caminar. Al subir por el camino que la gente del pueblo tomaba para llevar las ovejas a la montaña, vio un trozo de lana negra que colgaba de una rama. Y Shell se metió la lana bajo el cinturón. Se fijó en que más hebras de lana negra y blanca montaban las hierbas, los palitos las, y las ramas. Y Shell recogió esa lana y la guardó bajo del cinturón también. At home, Y Shell turned the twisted wool spinning into a long, thick strand of yarn. Then, over and under, back and forth, she pushed the batten and wove the yarn into fabric. En casa, Ishel torció la lana hasta formar una hebra larga y gruesa. Entonces pasó la espedía por arriba y por abajo, por delante y por detrás, y la lana se convirtió en tela. Ishel looked at what she had woven. The fabric was thick and heavy. The colors were boring. Tiny pieces of grass and dirt were stuck in the fabric. The weaving was far too thick, too boring, and far too dirty for anyone to buy. Ishel miró lo que había tejido. La tela era gruesa y pesada. Los colores eran aburridos. Diminutos pedazos de hierba estaban metidos en la tela. La tela era demasiado gruesa, aburrida y sucia. Nadie la quiera comprar. Tears rolled down Ishel's cheeks. There's no way my weaving will sell in the market, she thought. No way I can help. Wiping her tears, Ishel headed toward the milpa again. Along the way, she kicked aside a plastic bag. Red, purple, orange, green, yellow, and blue bags were everywhere. They were in the fields, drooping from the branches and clogging roads and ditches. There were so many bags, it was hard for her to walk. Las lágrimas rodaron por las mejillas de Ishel. No hay manera que mi tejido se vende en el mercado, pensó. No, puede ayuda no puedo ayudar. Enjugándose las lágrimas, Ishel se dirigió a la milpa otra vez. Por el camino apartó con el pie una bolsa plástica. Había bolsas rojas, moradas, anaranjadas, verdes, amarillas y azules por todas partes. Estaban en los campos, colgando de las ramas y obstruyendo caminos y zanjas. Había tantas bolsas que era difícil caminar. Angry, Ishel picked up a bag. She ripped it to shreds and suddenly had an idea. Enojada, Ishel recogió una bolsa. La rompió en tiritas. De pronto, 
se le ocurrió una idea. Ishelle gathered bag after colorful bag. She took the bags home, washed them, and hung them to dry. Now what are you doing? Another neighbor asked. Ishelle smiled. You'll see, she answered. Ishelle recogió una bolsa tras otra de diferentes colores. Las llevó a casa, las lavó, y las puso a secar. ¿Y ahora qué haces? le preguntó otra vecina. Ishel sonrió, sonrió. Ya verás, respondió. By the next day, the bags were dry. Ishel cut each bag into long, thin strips. And she tied the strips together, sitting at her loom. Ishel pushed the batten over and under, back and forth, weaving until she used all the strips. Al día siguiente, las bolsas estaban secas. Ishel cortó cada bolsa en tiras largas y finas. Las ató unas con otras. Sentada en su telar, Ishel pasó la espedía por arriba y por abajo, por delante y por detrás, y tejió hasta usar todas las tiras. The fabric was short, but it was clean and colorful. It had blues as clear as the sky, reds as bright as flowers, yellows as golden as the corn. The fabric looked like a beautiful rainbow, almost as pretty as the weavings her mother, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers before her. El tejido era pequeño, pero estaba limpio y lleno de calor. Tenía azules tan claros como el cielo, rojos tan brillantes como las flores, y amarillos tan dorados como la, el maíz. La tela parecía una hermosa acoriz, casi tan bonita como los tejidos de su madre, sus abuelas y sus bisabuelas. Wondering what else she could make with plastic bags, Ishel headed back to the milpa. She gathered more bags. The path looked cleaner and the countryside prettier. Preguntándose qué otra cosa podía hacer con bolsas plásticas, Ishel se dirigió a la milpa. A medida que recogía bolsas, el camino lució más limpio y el campo más bonito. When Ishelle returned home, her mother and neighbors were waiting with colorful plastic bags. We saw what you were doing, said a neighbor. We want to help. And without the bags everywhere, our village looks pretty again, said another neighbor. Cuando Ishelle regresó a casa, su madre y las vecinas la esperaban con bolsas de diferentes colores. Vimos lo que estabas haciendo, dijo una vecina, y queremos ayudar. Y sin las bolsas tiradas por todas partes, nuestro pueblo vuelve a lucir bonita, dijo otra. Ishel thanked them. Then she handed the weaving to her mother and said, My first rainbow. Her mother hugged her close. It's beautiful, my love, she said. Thank you, Mama, Ishel said. But do you think it will sell? Well, let's take it to the market and see, said her mother. Ishel les dio les, las gracias. Entonces le dio el tejido a su madre y dijo, Mi primer arcoiris. Su mamá la, la abrazó fuerte y le dijo, Es hermoso, mi amor. Gracias, mamá, dijo Ishel. ¿Pero crees que se venderá? Vamos a llevarlo al mercado. Y ya veremos, dijo su mamá. At the market the next day, Ishel and her mother watched as people walked by the stalls. Finally, a woman stopped. She picked up Ishel's weaving and asked, Did you make this? When Ishel nodded, the woman smiled. Her weaving sold, and for a very good price. Al día siguiente en el mercado, 
Y Shell y su madre miraron a la gente que se paseaba entre los puestos. Finalmente, una mujer se detuvo, miró el tejido de Shell y preguntó, ¿Tú hiciste esto? Cuando Shell asintió, la mujer sonrió. Su tejida se vendió y a muy buen precio. Y Shell beamed with happiness. Now she could help pay for her books and school. And like her mother, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers before her, Ishel had woven a rainbow. Ishel estaba radiante de felicidad. Ahora podía ayudar a pagar sus libros y su escuela. Y como su madre, sus abuelas y sus bisabuelas había tejido un arcoris. That was a little bit longer than usual, wasn't it? That's because we read the book in Spanish and English. It was side by side. Each page had, each page had both. So that just means that it's almost like reading the same book twice, right? If you're a Spanish speaker, you probably felt like we read that book twice. But isn't it nice to see a book that has both Spanish and English side by side and you get a chance to hear something that's familiar or maybe not familiar, but you get to learn a little bit about it? The other thing is that book had some Guatemalan words in it, but I'm pretty sure I probably said wrong, but I tried my best. If your family's from Guatemala, when we get back to Shaver, maybe you can teach me how to count in that language, because that was the part that I think I had the hardest time with. So I hope you enjoyed the book. It gives us good ideas about how to be creative, how to be determined, and how to accomplish something new. And I know those are qualities that you all have, the ability to be determined and try something new and get it done. So have a great week, Shaver Tigers. Keep your eyes out for that Shaver Tiger because I think there's a new TikTok Tiger coming out pretty soon. So check that YouTube page. Have a great day.